Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Roaming Road. I'm David Dildine. And this is Holy Week. It is the week that we celebrate Easter, the crucifixion, and our salvation through Jesus Christ. This is the week that changed eternity for all of us. This is the week that is so amazing that we just are so grateful to God that he came and sacrificed himself for us so that we could have eternity to spend with him, to worship him throughout all eternity. What an amazing week that we celebrate right now at this, at this time. It's incredible as we look to all that Christ has done for us, all that he opened up for us on that week over 2,000 years ago. How amazing this is. It's an incredible time here at the Cross TV and at the Roaming Road as, as we celebrate Jesus and everything that he's doing, and he is doing so much here at the Cross TV. We're now all the way through Israel in every home. We are throughout 33 countries all over the world celebrating the good news of Jesus Christ. How exciting is that? You know, as we talk about the roaming road and whatever road of life you happen to be on, that God is there. You know, sometimes those roads are smooth and nicely paved and they're easy to go on. Sometimes they have a lot of curves and, and twists and turns and, and they're very confusing and you're not sure what's going to be around the next curve. Sometimes they're extremely rough roads with giant potholes and difficulties all the way through and, and rocks and different obstacles that, that you need to go around. You know, over 2,000 years ago, as the disciples went through this week, they had a range of emotions that were just incredible that they went through. So many difficulties, so many things that, that were shocking to them. Now, for you and I, as we look back on this week, we know the end of the story. We know that Easter Sunday is coming. We know that Christ is going to rise again and that all is going to be um, taken care of, that all is going to become extremely positive and exciting and eternity is going to be won by Jesus. We know that because we've seen this. We're coming from our standpoint and, and we look back on that and we look back with gratitude and, and thankfulness and just excitement as we know the end of the story. But for them, think about it, if you were one of the disciples back in that day, and here you are, you have been walking with the Messiah, and you believe absolutely everything that he's been telling you. You know that he is the Messiah. He's been fulfilling prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, and you know that he is, he is the one you've been waiting for. He is the one who is going to offer salvation. He is the one that is going to bring back the nation of Israel and become the Lion of Judah. You know that he is that one. And then suddenly he starts telling you that he's going to be sacrificed, that he's going to die, that he's going to be crucified, that he's going to come back to life. Now, he's told you many things and he's shown you many things, and your faith has grown. You've seen him do things that don't make sense. You've seen him walk on water. You've seen him raise people from the dead. You've seen him feed 5,000 with just five loaves and two little fish. You've seen him do some incredible things as he calms the storm and suddenly says, peace be still. You've seen him go onto the Mount of Transfiguration and suddenly he is there with Moses and Elijah. You've seen him go into Jairus' daughter's room and raise her from the dead. As everybody else is laughing and ridiculing him, you've seen him do that. So everything that he has told you so far has happened Everything that he's told you, you've seen with your own eyes, and yet you still struggle with it because it is so out of the realm of the natural world. 
it's so incredible that you still struggle with it to where he looks and says, oh, ye of little faith, why do you still doubt? But you're, you're trying to get your, your mind around everything that he's doing, everything that he's telling you, and you're excited because you believe he is going to overthrow Rome. He is going to bring Israel to, back to prominence. He is going to do these great things as the Messiah, and you're right there, right next to him. And then suddenly he tells you he's going to be sacrificed for the sins of mankind. He's going to die on the cross. He is going to be betrayed. And you struggle with that. You, you don't understand how that can be part of the plan. And then you're in the Mount of Olives, in the Garden of Gethsemane. You're there with him. And suddenly soldiers come and they take him away. And they remove him, and suddenly those words that he said are coming true, and you don't want that to happen because you don't know the end of the story. You're terrified. You're, you don't understand. And you see him taken away, and he gets judged and whipped and beaten. Peter goes and is warming himself by the fire and is just not understanding what's happening. How could this happen? What is going on? I don't understand. John was inside while Jesus is being judged, ridiculed, spit on, slapped. John is seeing all this. He sees a little servant girl and says, go out, find somebody from Nazareth, fisherman like me, and bring him in here. Bring him to me. She goes out, she finds somebody matching that description. And she goes, aren't you with the Nazarene? Aren't you him? Peter's like, no, no, it's not me. She asks him again, because he's the only one that matches that description. She really believes it's him. And he's like, no, no, until finally he starts swearing to prove that he is not with the Christ. He didn't know what to do. He's totally... In, in derision, he, he's not understanding how can this happen. This is not the way he thought it was supposed to be. Friends, God does that many times in our life. We may be on a very smooth path, and one second can change everything in our lives. Maybe it's an accident. Maybe it's um, a phone call about a loved one who's sick. Maybe it's news from work news from friends, suddenly our entire life can change and the road that we thought we were on is suddenly not the road that we're on right now. We are suddenly on a, a more difficult path, a, a path that we don't understand. We can't see around the next turn and things are getting very, very difficult. You just... You lose hope, you lose faith, you, you start to wonder, God, did you really mean what you said? God, did you, do you really, are you really there? Did I just imagine all this? Was I just delusional when, when I was hearing these things? When you showed me the things that you showed me, are, are they really going to happen? Because sometimes we start to lose faith. On the day of the crucifixion, how many disciples are at the cross? None of them. Absolutely none of them. They've all fled. They're all running away. They don't know what to do. They just, they're scared. They've lost all faith. The next day comes, and now they're terrified because they know that if this can happen to Jesus, it can happen to them too and that they're going to be sought after. They're going to be hunted down, each and every one of them, because everyone knew that they were with Jesus. They're terrified. Can you imagine how many times we just have 
we'll have a vision of, of how we think God is going to do something. And then what happens is the death of a vision takes place. Something happens that just kills the way that we think it was supposed to happen. It kills it inside of us and our faith becomes tested and we have to either stand strong or flee. And how often do we actually choose fleeing in those situations? How often do we say, this is just too hard, I just can't do it. I just can't believe anymore. I just can't hang on anymore. I just can't hold on to my faith. It's just gotten too hard. Too much has gone against me. Too much has not gone the way that I thought it would. And we lose our faith. Friend, this happens to every Christian. And every time that God is going to do something amazing in your life, he will bring about a vision and then he will bring about the death of a vision where you start really questioning, is this what he said? Is this what he wants to do? Did I make a mistake? Did I hear him wrong? Did I, did I blow it somehow? Did my own actions cause what God was telling me he was going to do? Did it change his plan? Never doubt in the darkness what God has told you in the light. When God has told you something that he says is going to happen, hang on to that and know that that is the truth. And even though circumstances may seem like it's never going to happen, believe in the words of our Savior. Believe in what God has told you. Don't grab on to circumstances. Grab on to what he has given to you. Never doubt in the darkness what God has shown you in the light. This was an incredibly tough time for the disciples, trying to figure out what, what to do. They were now leaderless. They had no idea where to go. Jesus had been teaching them, training them, and now suddenly he is gone. And there's nothing out there but Roman soldiers looking for them. There's nothing out there but knowing that the same cross that Jesus was on could be waiting for them. They were terrified. But you know what is the amazing, exciting part of this week? It's not just the redemption that takes place on Good Friday. It is not just the sacrifice that takes place on that cross. Salvation is won when death is defeated and Christ rises again on Sunday morning. This is where the story changes and this is where the story in your life will change. If you are looking for something that God is going to do in your life and you have had the death of a vision, know that what can happen is the rebirth of a vision. The resurrection. And that happens on Sunday morning. Here are the disciples. They're terrified. And what happens after that? Luke 24 says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, 
and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now, in Luke, the great thing about the book of Luke is that most of the information that Luke got, and he researched it fully, he was not a Christian at this time. He had not accepted Christ, but he got his information from Mary, the mother of Jesus. He became close friends with her later on in her life and learned much of the research that he did for his gospel came from her. So in reality, this is her version. This is her recollection of the resurrection through her eyes. How exciting is that? Because she was there at the tomb. Now, one of the reasons that we know that this is, is really true and not a made-up story is that anybody at that time, if they had made up this story, they would have had men there. Men would have been at the tomb and talked to these two angels. Women were not seen as credible. Yet, God sees them as credible, even though men at the time, the society at the time, did not see them as credible. God did. And God shows that this is real, actual fact. And he chose to initially bring the news through, through some women. And they went and told the disciples, who were supposed to be the big spiritual ones who were actually cowering together in a room trying to figure out what they should do. And even when they hear the news that Jesus has risen, he's alive, just like he said he would, just like he did everything else, he fulfilled his words every single time, every miracle that he did every time he would tell them something and then he would follow through and do it. Here he is doing that again and they still struggled with it. Now we can look at that and say, wow, what a lack of faith. And yet, do we still do that ourselves in this day and age? Do we still have trouble believing that God is going to give us a resurrection? That God is there wanting to renew our, our vision, renew our hope, renew our desires, renew the plan that he has for our life that we may think has been totally destroyed, that we have done too many things that have ruined the path that God had us on, that have done so many things that we have damaged ourselves for all eternity. We serve a God of redemption, a God who loves us, a God who always wants the best for us, and the things that he is doing in our life is always for our good, whether we understand that or not, whether we get it or not. Peter was going through some very difficult things, as were all the other disciples. They were terrified. They were, they were just scared out of their mind. They had lost all hope. They were just dejected. And yet, here is Christ. On Resurrection Day. Even the, the hard times that each of them went through, all of the fear, all of the lack of faith, all that it did was it helped to propel them further after the resurrection. The difficulties that they, they struggled with at the crucifixion, became the fuel that provided energy to get them out and to spread the gospel throughout the world. And that's what they did. They spread the gospel throughout the world like no one else ever could have because they, they knew there was nothing to be afraid of. That all the fears that they had had were unfounded. Because God is greater than their fears. God is greater than that Roman army that they were so afraid of. God is greater than the trials and the tribulations that they were going to go through. 
He had already been through that road himself. He led the way. And they knew they were going to follow him in these trials and tribulations. They knew that he had already conquered death. And so everything was all for them that they knew the path had already been taken. The, the victory had already been won. The enemy had already been defeated. And they had no concerns anymore. Because Jesus, Jesus had won the battle. He had won the victory over death. Nobody had ever done that before. And no one can do that. For only God can be victorious over death. How amazing is this week as we look forward to celebrating the resurrection of Jesus on Sunday and understand that this pattern comes about in your life consistently where you may have a vision and a desire and a dream and a goal and suddenly that all seems to be dead. It just seems to be killed out of nowhere taken away, totally destroyed. And yet, Resurrection Day is coming. Resurrection Day is coming. Now, this is a great week where we see people all over the world come to know Christ, come to be part of the family of God. And I just want to challenge each and every one of you out there no matter where you may be, no matter what your situation is, no matter where you may live, and the trials and the troubles that you're going through, know that Jesus went on the cross to pay for the sins that you've committed, the sins that are in your life, the sins that are in my life. He went and sacrificed himself to pay the penalty for each and every one of us. And he paid that penalty. And then he defeated death. So that we could spend an eternity living with him. Now, have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Have you accepted him as your savior? Do you know that eternity is within you? Do you have the Holy Spirit within you? If you don't, I'm going to ask that you would Pray this prayer right now with me. Heavenly Father, I understand that you sacrificed your son, Jesus Christ, for me, for my life, for my sins. I know that I'm a sinner, and I confess that. And I ask that you would wash me in the blood of the Lamb, cover me with the sacrifice of Jesus. And let me spend an eternity with you. Forgive me of my sins. And let me spend all eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, the Holy Spirit is entering into your heart. Jesus is your Heavenly Father. And you are going to spend an eternity with Him. This is a fantastic week of celebration. Yes, as we see his sacrifice on the cross, it is painful, it is terrifying, and it is so hurtful to see all that he went through. But that shows how much he loves us. And then we get to celebrate the resurrection where he comes back to life defeating death. And we, too, are now partakers of that. We get to receive that eternal life that he won for us. If you have accepted Christ and prayed that prayer, please write in to us here at the Roaming Road. We'd love to hear your story and learn more about you and do anything that we can to help you on that pathway. God has a great plan for you, and God has a great plan for all of his children as we go on the roaming road, because no matter what part of the road you're on, whether it's rough or smooth or 
windy, or tough, God is already there, and he's teaching you, and he's doing things for you, because that is the love of God. He's always got the best for you. Until next week, we'll see you right here on the Roaming Road. God bless you. Have a fantastic Easter.